SpaceX is pushing the boundaries of space exploration with its ambitious Starship program. The latest Starship, designated 30, is complete and awaiting its maiden voyage, but more testing is needed before it can blast off. Meanwhile, construction on Starbase second launch tower, Tower B, is progressing at a dizzying pace. Will it be ready in time to support the ambitious launch schedule? SpaceX is building a second launch tower at Starbase, aptly named Tower B, to significantly enhance its launch capabilities. This tower will allow for double the launch frequency, providing crucial redundancy for the entire Starship program. The tower is quickly taking shape, with modules being added at an increasing pace. The massive CC-8800-1 crane plays a crucial role in this construction. It not only lifts the modules into place but also serves another essential function, installing the elevator shaft inside the tower. This elevator, extending the entire height of the tower, provides essential access for personnel and equipment to reach the highest levels. SpaceX is moving at lightning speed to complete Tower B. The recent addition of Module 3, stacked just two days after Module 2, demonstrates their commitment to accelerating the construction process. However, the journey is not without challenges. The readiness of Sections 4 and 5, which arrived at the Sanchez site this month, could potentially slow down the progress. These modules house the delicate piping and electronics for the Starship's upper stage quick disconnect arm, which supplies fuel and power to the ship and requires careful handling. To lift and stack these massive Starship modules, SpaceX has developed a unique system, giant metal chopsticks. These impressive lifting arms, consisting of two chopsticks and a carriage, are essential for tower construction. The chopsticks, transported from Brownsville to Sanchez, have now all arrived at the Starbase site. Only the Ship Quick Disconnect Arm, SQD, remains to be delivered. This arm is expected to be an improved version of the one used on Tower A, reflecting SpaceX's commitment to making the entire launch system rapidly reusable. The production site at Starbase is a hive of activity, constantly churning out starships. This tireless endeavor exemplifies SpaceX's dedication to building the largest and most powerful rockets in history. With each step forward, SpaceX is moving closer to achieving its grand vision, making space travel accessible and propelling humanity towards new frontiers. Starbase, SpaceX's ambitious spaceport, is a 24-7 hive of activity, a constant symphony of innovation. Every day brings new developments, new prototypes, and new challenges overcome. Let's dive into the latest happenings at this groundbreaking facility. Hold on to your hats, because SpaceX has a new trick up their sleeve. It's not a candy dispenser, but a clever innovation for deploying their new version 2 Starlink Internet satellites. This new design incorporates a unique payload door at the base of the Starship's payload bay, roughly 7 meters wide. This wider, but not taller, door offers a significant advantage. Why? A tall door with a large footprint could compromise structural integrity and require extra reinforcement, adding unnecessary weight. That's a big no-no for rockets, as weight directly translates to less payload reaching space. This clever design ensures Starship maintains its structural strength for re-entry while minimizing bracing, a crucial factor for a rocket that aims to return to Earth. The latest Starship to take center stage is Ship 30, slated to be the next to soar to the heavens on Flight 5. While still sporting the older Block 1 design, it boasts some serious upgrades, particularly a new and improved heat shield. The team at Starbase meticulously replaced all the heat tiles on Ship 30 with a newer, stronger version. They also added an ablative layer beneath the tiles, acting as a non-reusable backup heat shield in case of damage during re-entry. This is no small feat, considering the immense forces and heat generated during re-entry. This extensive overhaul is a direct response to the heat shield issues experienced during the previous Starship launch. SpaceX is determined to ensure that Ship 30 returns to Earth with more than just its flaps attached. Ship 30 recently made its way to Massey's test site, where it underwent a static fire test. But why a second test? This ship had already completed a static fire back in May. The answer lies with one of its engines. During the May test, a problem was detected, requiring an engine swap. The new engine needs to be tested, and what better way to do it than on the brand new static fire stand at Massey's? SpaceX's relentless pace at Starbase is evident in the arrival of a new booster test tank at Massey's. This tank, a Block 2 version, was promptly lifted onto CanCrusher 2.0, a unique contraption designed to simulate the immense stresses a Starship hull endures during launch, flight, and re-entry. While this may not seem surprising, 
It's important to note that CanCrusher 2.0 is not yet complete. This signals SpaceX's unwavering commitment to testing and refining their designs, constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible in space travel. Starbase is a whirlwind of activity, a testament to humanity's insatiable curiosity and ambition to reach for the stars. The future of space exploration is being forged here, one groundbreaking development at a time. The world of space exploration is abuzz with activity, and SpaceX and NASA are leading the charge. Let's take a look at some of the latest developments, from the gargantuan CanCrusher 2.0 to the fascinating discoveries of the Curiosity rover on Mars. SpaceX's CanCrusher 2.0 is a marvel of engineering, designed to simulate the immense forces a Starship hull endures during launch, flight, and re-entry. The latest development, SpaceX is building the Can Crusher in segments, with the next section currently awaiting installation. Why the segmented approach? There are two possibilities. Firstly, SpaceX might not need the full Can Crusher for the initial test due to the size of the test tank. The full Can Crusher would then be used for a larger booster. Secondly, the next segment might need to be added after the tank is placed inside, implying a complex testing procedure. Space exploration is a relentless journey, filled with both triumphs and setbacks. This week, we've seen a fascinating mix of advancements and challenges, from SpaceX's ambitious Starship program to NASA's controversial decision regarding the Viper lunar rover. At Starbase, SpaceX continues to push the limits of rocket technology. The CanCrusher 2.0, a massive testing apparatus, is being built in segments, demonstrating their dedication to rigorous testing. Meanwhile, the Starship program continues its evolution, with the latest iteration, Ship 30, ready for its maiden flight. NASA's International Space Station, a testament to global collaboration, is nearing retirement. In 2030, it will be deorbited into the Pacific Ocean. SpaceX has been tasked with this monumental undertaking, and their solution is surprisingly innovative. Instead of using the Dragon capsule or Starship, SpaceX plans to modify the existing Cargo Dragon 2, adding 46 Draco thrusters and expanding its trunk module to accommodate extra propellant. This powerful new version will be capable of bringing the massive station down safely. Meanwhile on Mars, the Curiosity rover continues to make groundbreaking discoveries. The rover recently stumbled upon a large geode filled with pure sulfur crystals, a first for the Red Planet. This discovery is significant because sulfur is a vital component of amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. It raises tantalizing questions about the possibility of life on Mars. Unfortunately, not every mission is successful. NASA's Viper Lunar Rover, intended to explore the shadowed regions of the Moon's South Pole, has been cancelled due to budgetary overruns. The culprit isn't the rover itself, but delays in the development of Astrobotics Luna Lander. NASA's solution? To pay Astrobotics to land a mass simulator, a block of concrete, on the Moon instead. This decision, driven by congressional constraints, has been met with criticism. The lunar south pole holds immense scientific value, and a concrete block offers no scientific insights. However, NASA is hopeful that Congress will approve additional funding for Viper, allowing the mission to proceed. The relentless pursuit of knowledge and exploration continues. SpaceX's innovations and Curiosity's discoveries showcase the potential of space travel, while the Viper Luna saga highlights the challenges faced in this ambitious field. Stay tuned for more exciting news from the world of space exploration. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And for more awesome space content, be sure to check out our next episode. Thank you for watching.